Good morning. Welcome to Rice Dairy TV and Behind the Numbers. With me today is Trevor Sleggers. Trevor is a risk management advisor here at Rice Dairy. Uh, he's a CME member. Trevor grew up on a family dairy farm in the Republic of California. Uh, so he's been in the dairy industry longer than me. And in case you didn't see on CNBC, <laughs> final cheese auction. Oh yeah. There's Trevor, right? Right here. Right there. That's There's nice, Trevor. That's a nice close up. Yeah. Um, so he's on our floor operation as well, working with lots of our clients. And in today's Behind the Numbers, we're going to talk about OTC, yeah. which you also participate in our OTC uh, desk, helping clients access those markets as well. Yeah. Uh, thanks for being here, Trevor. Thanks for having me, Rice. Let's, what are we looking at here? What is this dairy OTC report? Yeah, so this report here is the monthly OTC data. And this basically, so we're going to be looking at here the month of June. Um, if I can just pull this up here. So we're going to be focusing right here. And this is basically just a, a review of all of the OTC trades in dairy for the month of June. And so this pulls from, thanks, this pulls from three different uh, swap depository reports here. Number one, this, uh, this CME one right here, and then, or I'm sorry, the CME one right here, the ICE one right here, and then lastly, the DTCC. And so basically, this report takes all of that data and combines it all, breaks it down into through uh, these products right here, <coughs> all these dairy products right here. It shows us all the key information, what traded by product, Yeah. when did it trade, wh which uh, SDR did it get reported into. Yep, absolutely. Okay. What, do you, uh, what do you look for in this report when, you're, when it comes out each month and when you're looking at this kind of data, what, yeah. what, what type of stuff are you looking at? I mean, really, you're just kind of looking for any kind of spikes in volume here. So, I mean, obviously, we had a spike back here in 2015. Uh, not only that, but you're looking for any kind of trends or patterns that are developing over the over the months. Anything st stand out to you here? The number one thing right here that I'm looking at is going to be this class four rent number right here, this month over month change, which really on this chart here doesn't really <clears throat> do it justice. So if we scroll down to the second page, you can kind of see that really this incline here from these three months and this really acceleration from May to June, uh, it's been in a steady incline here, this, this class four number, while these are trending downwards. And these, are the, yeah, these are the components here. So, yeah. you know, if you, if you look here, we, we had a nice little increase here. What do you think is, uh, is driving that? So if you look at this number exactly, you know, what's actually in this number. Yeah. We saw that actually 90% of this is July to December. Okay. How, how do you see that? So you go back and look at you the go SDR back data. In the, yeah, in the swap depository reports and you go back and you see that there. So, keeping that in mind, we can go back to price here. And this right here, just so we're all on the same page, this is the July to Dece futures average on the CME, the class four in a daily chart, okay? So if we look at the month of June right here, we hit the high of the year in June, in last month. So obviously I think price was a driver of volume, you know, given the, the sell side liquidity coming in here from the, probably from the, the, from the uh, producers. And uh, I think that's kind of what was driving this volume here. Got it. Um... And we talked about that a little bit before. This is o what we were looking at is OTC volume. Mm -hmm. So we saw a spike in class four OTC volume coinciding with a spike in the price north of $17 class four. Yeah. What do, you th what do you think that is? Is that maybe processor forward contracting for Absolutely. farmers? Yeah, I think so. I mean, a lot of these producers go through their processor to, to forward contract, and that eventually, some of it ends up on this OTC market. Takeaway here is, you know, north of 17, you could see sell side liquidity in, in class four again. Completely. And also one side note too, if we look at a class three uh, chart just like this, which we don't have, but if we did look at this, we yeah. would see that this is actually, this right here at 1740 is a premium to where class three was. 
So it was a higher of three and four, which also drives liquidity. So from maybe the sell any side. blend hedging or class one hedging completely from the sell side if you're going into class four at that yeah, point as well. Absolutely. Interesting. Uh, back to the OTC report here. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Uh, anything else stand out to you that's interesting? You know, the other thing that stands out to me is this cheese number right here. This uh, this nine twenty two, which you know c c compared to the Compared to this number really isn't too much, but it's really what's behind these numbers here. And so digging in, again, digging into the, the numbers a little bit more here, we find out that 75% of this is basically just cheese futures. Okay? Lookalikes. Lookalikes, exactly. So the interesting part is this 25% that are non-lookalikes. Okay? So what I mean by that is basically... This is blocks only and barrels only. We're seeing this number right here grow over time as hedgers are focused on either the block or the barrel specifically and not a blend of the two, which you get in the futures. Uh, that's a great point, and we've definitely seen a growth in that non lookalike stuff. Mm -hmm. What's driving that? Again, Rice, I think you got to go back to price here. And so we're looking at the block over barrel spread here. And you can see, man, over the month of June, look at that. This is the block over barrel, okay? So you're seeing the block at its high was around 26 cents. Okay, premium that's a, to that, the barrel. Yeah, premium to the barrel. That's, that's a huge <clears throat> price, especially when you figure back here, we were at, you know, the other way. At like seven and a half or so. So we've seen this being super volatile, which is bringing on a lot of basis risk in those cheese futures. Right. So basically, if a natural user, let's say their their buy price is tied to just the CME block, yep. or a manufacturer of just barrels, yep. if they're using the cheese futures instrument, which settles to a blend of the two, yeah. They're in, in an environment like you're showing circled, you know, up in here. Yeah. Or anywhere when it gets, you know, way beyond the standard deviation of that spread. Yeah. Their basis risk really starts to escalate. Completely. Yep. So, so how do you... We're seeing them look for an instrument that's got less basis risk. Yeah. So how do you take that out? You go just straight to... Going back here. Oops. So you're going straight back to what I had before. You're going straight back to the block, mm -hmm. or you're going straight back to the barrel, which eliminates that basis risk. So OTC, you've got lookalikes, yep. which are basically futures. Yep. You've got non-lookalikes, which are customized instruments. Yep. What else are we seeing in the non-lookalike world? The non-lookalike, yeah, trading over the counter. Uh, you know, one that really stands out to me is going to be this lactose. Okay, so over the past couple months, we've been seeing more and more lactose trade, uh, especially in the last two months here. And you can see this is price over here, right around in the in the low 40s. And it kind of makes sense. I mean, you don't have you don't have an exchange product of lactose. Okay, right. so what do you have to do? You have to go OTC. Okay, so, so with this volatility that we're seeing, you know, all of this, it makes sense that we're seeing more and more interest from our clients uh, on this lactose. Uh, and lactose is not tightly correlated with any other dairy product. Correct. And it turns out it's got a higher historic volatility ratio than any other dairy product. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, well, good. I know Rice Dairy TV is not as big as CNBC where you normally <laughs> show up, but appreciate your time. Yeah, it'll work. Yeah. Thanks, <clears throat> Thanks Rice. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. <laughs>